think we wanted to produce something that was very simple and clear and possibly uh, could be quickly absorbed. The Covid crisis has thrown up a whole lot of new disputes uh, which benefit very much from alternative means of resolution. The Bickle paper very nicely sets the background, throws up some of the legal concepts that would arise by readily in the legal system around the effect of a pandemic. Litigation and arbitration, which is no more than private litigation really, suffers from probably four problems, two of which are well known, cost and delay. But two others are the enormous amount of time and energy which it diverts people from doing their normal jobs, concentrating on the litigation. And secondly, the inflexibility of the result. The law is essentially binary, one person wins and one person loses. And about 25 years ago or so, uh, there began to come into the legal system the idea that there were sometimes, not in every case, better ways of solving disputes, which involved mediation and the like. And that has gathered pace over this century. And I think, in a sense, uh, the COVID crisis has enabled us to provide another kick, as it were, towards mediation, towards alternative ways of resolving disputes. But quite apart from that, the COVID crisis has thrown up a whole lot of new disputes uh, which benefit very much from alternative means of resolution, partly uh, because it would enable and particularly this is the purpose of the um, notes, and to, to have people to have breathing space to consider their position and discuss what they might do, but on top of that, uh, to consider alternatives to litigation and arbitration. That's what it says on the tin, in the sense that it's promoting everybody taking a pause um, before plunging into uh, the traditional dispute resolution mechanisms and thinking to themselves, is there a better way that we can do this? And of course, it was prompted by the onset of the uh, COVID-19 epidemic and the risk that supply chains would be affected and this would lead to litigation. But um, thinking about it now, we firmly believe that um, it's fit for purpose in a post-COVID world as well. First of all, I think the series sets out incredibly well the challenges of a pandemic and throwing up lots of potential actions around failed contracts or interrupted contracts, um, leading to what was described in the paper as a plethora of default, potentially, meaning that there would be um, the courts would get overloaded with litigation and people in serious dispute over uh, things that happened because of something almost beyond their control, which is the pandemic. So the Bickle paper very nicely sets the background, throws up some of the legal concepts that would arise quite readily in the legal system around the effect of a pandemic, and then starts to explore what can we do about this in a more constructive way to keep the economy safer and to keep disputes from becoming protracted and unnecessarily adversarial. I believe and hope that it is, and for two reasons. One is we are already on that path, and as so often happens, a path starts opening up, and then an event happens which actually justifies and encourages people to go along that path. And secondly, the sort of problems that the COVID crisis has thrown up are often very fit for mediation, for a breathing space, for alternative dispute resolution. I think there's certainly a need, uh, particularly at the smaller end of the scale, because access to dispute resolution via traditional methods, such as courts or, or even arbitration and tribunals, um, is becoming increasingly difficult for um, entities and individuals who are not large corporates. Particularly at that end, it may be very useful for them to understand that there are alternatives to those methods, which could be quicker, cheaper and more efficient. Very much so. I think the, originally the civil procedure reforms of the late 90s 
really helped catapult ADR into the rules of the civil justice system by way of the judges having power of cost sanctions for unreasonable refusal to mediate in cases and by way of directions to adjourn for mediation or other forms of ADR. So what the, what the pandemic has done is really just accelerated that sense of we need to do something with the system to get earlier, more cost-effective outcomes and more constructive outcomes that meet people's interests and they're not purely based on legal principles established over centuries. Very soon after the first lockdown in March 2020, we realised that the possibility of using the COVID crisis to encourage mediation and a breathing space, and indeed the need for uh, mediation and breathing space uh, was plain. And accordingly, on the 7th April 2020, uh, Bickel arranged a conference uh, to discuss that very topic and, as it were, to launch it. And the short, for a lawyer, a very short paper that was produced as a result, one and a half pages, was really intended to be a firing gun uh, for this exercise. Yes, because what we've learned from the practice of ADR is it does deliver benefits. Uh, things like the parties stay in control of the outcome. They don't risk a win-lose outcome in court, where sometimes their the senses the judge has gone against them irrationally or that the, the uh, evidence hasn't been taken into account, so they want to appeal. Uh, whereas ADR keeps them in control if they want a reasonable outcome that assesses their risks uh, but manages and limits the risk, then and mediation will help them negotiate that. And mediations are also very good at helping people articulate their interests, which aren't always about the legal principles. It might be current economic pressures on a company. It might be um, family relationships that are at stake. So mediation allows for a broader dialogue on interests rather than purely around legal principles. Describe uh, concept note one is the big thought piece, and concept note two is the legal analysis. Concept note three um, is really about well, how do we practically act and apply uh, the guidelines that we produced? My background is as uh, an in house lawyer in international organizations, so that was where I naturally went to well, how would this work? How would it apply? So um, I think we wanted to produce something that was very simple and clear and possibly uh, could be quickly absorbed. And we really wanted to focus on the people who, who really do matter in disputes, which is the clients. Uh, and given that this is about commercial contracts, these would be corporate clients, large corporates, but also small corporates as well, who might be facing a complex dispute for the first time if they've run their organisations properly. Uh, and we also wanted um, to uh, ensure that the guidelines could be applied in virtually any jurisdiction in the world. Obviously, there are uh, different uh, um, thoughts on um, interference in contracts um, around the world, and we wanted to produce something that would work anywhere. I think as Concept Note 1 says, we wanted to avoid a situation where there are winners and losers. So the guidelines uh, are not intended to be compulsory. There's no third party interference. Um, there's no changing of who is the winner and who is the loser, but you still have winners and losers. It's about um, putting the conduct of a dispute firmly within the control of the parties um, and um, hoping that they will make constructive choices.